Hi, in this dev game dev diary, I wanted to go over one of the features of, of the game that I'm writing, which is highlighting objects when you look at them. Now, here's an example highlighted object, and there's a few tutorials I'm going to link in the description uh, which show you how to create a highlighted object. Um, I'll go through it very quickly, but uh, the links explain it much better, and that's not the point of this video. So I have a highlight material. So here's the highlight material. And you can see that it is pretty complex. Um, there you go. You can see that it's uh, fairly complex, takes a lot of inputs, a lot of subtractions, etc. So what is actually happening here is that you're basically subtracting anything that's in the custom depth path with uh, the original, finding the border of it, and putting a nice little color, This, in this case being blue. Uh, and that's what's the emissive color, that's what's glowing out there. Um, and what I've actually done is created an instance of that material which makes it red. Now we can change that and we can change the the width of it. And again, in the other tutorials it goes much better, much more in depth about this, and that's not the point of this. So um, I have that, you know, we can change the, the width of the line as you can see. So let's say this is going to be two in width. There you go. So what's happening here is that you then have a, uh, let me just move back out a little bit. So you see that, that the highlight has disappeared, but that's because I'm in this post-process volume. So if once I move into this post-process volume and I select this object, what I can do is that if I select this post-process volume, you can see that I have uh, post-process materials. And I say I have a post-process material. So anything that that's, has a custom um, depth pass on it um, will have that. So for example, this object, if we have a look at the render, is got a render custom depth pass, right? So if we take that off, um, that material will not be applied to this anymore. Brilliant. So what I've also done is when I look at an object, and you see here my, my trace, when it hits it, it applies that. But the problem that I was having is that, let me just go and find my first person blueprint and set it up so that we can see what's happening, was that I could look at an, uh, an object, set its custom render pass, custom depth pass, I put a uh, big button, um, but it would then switch everything on. So let's have a look at that. So I have an event graph here. And there's, there's some improvements that could be done in this. Oop, let's go to the, um, let's show the event graph. Uh, dock it. Let's have a look. So there's a lot of stuff happening in my first person player. Let's ignore a lot of this stuff. But I've got an event tick. Uh, it does some stuff about if I'm holding an object, etc. That has nothing to do with it. Um, and I've got a, a function called fire line trace, which actually does the highlighting. I should rename this function. And what this function does is gets a line trace from a camera, which again is another function which basically gets a line trace from a camera. Lots of tutorials about getting a line trace from the camera. Essentially it gets uh, your world location, so that's where you're looking at from. And you get your forward vector, uh, adds them up, and pl plus a distance and, and returns that out. Right? So that's your line trace. Um, well that's the direction you're looking in and then you can have a hit distance as well and it should add that in is that adding in yes it's adding that in into that right and then it does a line trace so you can see this line trace by a debug for one frame or for the duration or whatever so one, when i run this um you can see my little line trace is like running around there cool so then what i'm you normally do is then go well whatever object we have let's see if we have if we've hit an object what we should do is send set custom render path so we then get this object and say um, set custom render depth uh, to true um, if we've hit something and if we now run that what will happen is that every time we um, hit something we actually switch it on right so we're switching it on all the time so now everything is glowing 
which is not exactly what we want. We want to like things to switch on and switch on like. So what I did was actually save an instance of the whatever object we've hit. So I've created a component called a highlighted object. Um, and what we do is we say, have we hit something? If we haven't hit something, or let's say if we have hit something, we go and check whether we have a highlighted object. If we do have a highlighted object that we're storing, that we, a object that we saw before, we t take off its render path and then set it to null. If we don't have an object, this is the first thing we've ever seen or first thing we've ever hit, we set the highlighted object to the object that we hit and then we set the custom render path. If we don't hit something and we do have a highlighted object, we unhighlight it because in other words, we've looked away from it and then we set it to null. So that's a bit of a cleanup. So now you get this nice effect in which you can uh, highlight over objects and when you move away, they, because you will be looking at something else, they get unset. Um, hopefully this is a good solution. I'm not sure yet. Um, it should be okay. Um, this one obviously is always on. There we go. Because it was on from the beginning. But yeah, hopefully this is a good good solution for this. And then you can do things by saying, well, okay, wait, I have an object that's highlighted and now I can pick it up or move it or control it whichever way I want to do it. Okay, hopefully that was useful for this little dev diary.